This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to your house to declare to you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15, three and four, tell us what the gospel is. How that Jesus Christ died by our sins, according to scripture, he was buried, he rose again, the third day, according to the scripture. Spirit of the Lord throughout me, he said, I to to preach the gospel to the poor, send me to heal the broken heart, raise the deliverance to the captives, recovering sight to the blind, Set at liberty, then that are bruised. Amen. The word is nigh thee. If that you are, as your mouth, there's a word of faith, which I preach. You can mess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart, that God bless you from the dead, you shall be saved. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth, confession, and made unto salvation. Thank God. I'm not a shame of the gospel of Christ. There's the power of God unto salvation. To everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written. The just shall live by his faith. Amen. Thank God. Amen. I want to welcome everyone for saving this broadcast on live stream. Amen. Roku. Amen. Apple TV. YouTube. And other devices. <laughs> Thank God. Amen. 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 On my right, co host. Terry Brown, good morning. Good morning. Thank you. On my left, co host, Kathy Davidson, good morning. Good morning. Amen. And to your left, co host, Amen, Apostle Anthony Reese, good morning. Good morning. Thank God. On the wire in Colorado, Gather, Gather, Courier, good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. I think we better get the migrants. Amen.
said, it's 4.30 this morning. I've been praying, and I've got a hold of something that's very hard. 4.30, more than five hours, huh? Amen. And it's extremely hard praying. Praying something true. Amen. I don't know what, but it's not coming through very fast. Amen. So, if there's anyone that has a message, a word from God, Be gone. Amen. Thank God. You know, I just want to make a comment because your family knew this, the holiness church that you went to, because we have the story of Elliot Hodge. You said you haven't prayed it through yet. And even the holiness people, which did not have the baptism in the Holy Ghost, knew that you had to pray through. Absolutely. And I love, I think it was Elliot Hodge gave a nun uh, an explanation of praying through because she didn't understand what he was saying. Right. And he said, well, if you're Mr. Jones and you want to call up Mr. Smith and you want to borrow Mr. Smith's wagon. Yeah. So you go to the phone and you call Mr. Smith. Well, Mr. Smith doesn't answer. And he said, so what happens? She goes, you're not going to get the wagons. He said, that's it. He said, you keep calling Mr. Smith and you keep calling Mr. Smith until he picks up the phone and you get the wagon. And that's what we do in praying through. We don't stop. We keep praying until we get what we're praying for. And like you said, and I've, I've watched you all these years and it happens to us. Sometimes you don't even know what you're praying through, but you know you haven't gotten it yet. Right. And you know when you get it in your spirit, you know you've got it. And then it's kind of fun to watch and see what happens, what you were praying through. Can you just bring up a, a subject that I've not talked a lot about? The, the holiness people that I was born and raised in were just a bunch of Methodists. That God moves Amen. in their life. Amen. And it, it amazes me how much they knew about prayer. Amen. When Elliot Hodge went into the hospital, and the story will be available on Facebook, I'm sure. When he went into the hospital, he was not expected to live. He accidentally shot himself in the arm. And blood poisoning had set in, basically. And what they did, it was amazing. They called their prayers, their prayers. They called up your uncle and your grandfather. And they called up, I think, your, your aunt and, and an, another group of people. And they came, and they came to the hospital knowing that he was not expected to live. And they prayed until they knew that he was going to live. Nellie Johnson. Amen. Was one of them, yes. Right. A guy named McIntyre. I knew, I knew these people. Amen. Yeah, I couldn't deny they got results. You know, they, like I just said, they prayed until they knew. And I, one of them even told the doctor, this man's going to live. It said, I think he said, what, we, we got a hold of God? Yeah. And we got our answer. Sure did. And, and their praying was so loud in the hospital, they scared the staff. And this was a religious hospital. It was a Catholic hospital. It was a Catholic Pittsburgh hospital. And they Kansas. said, we have never heard prayer like this. Pittsburgh, Kansas. That's right. Well, since you brought that up, I got a phone call one day 
about my mother. Amen. And they said, Mother, mother was a white Baptist. And you wouldn't always know she believed much. She was just quiet. And they told me my mother, my mother was having strokes one after another and she wasn't going to live. And then we'd always agreed that when they think they can't help them, don't be forcing medicine in them. Just don't resuscitate. No, don't. No resuscitation. Nothing. Right. And they told me what had happened. And I said, well, where's Dad? He's on his way to Sir Coxie. What? He's left the hospital. <laughs> My I, guess to go pray. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, he had a lot, got a lot done in his truck. Huh? He got a lot of praying done in that truck. That guy. He could, I'll tell you this, he had faith. Yeah. And he'd get answers. Amen. But anyway, I said, don't take the the blood's away from her. And they said, where do you have? Oh, man. I happen to know a lot about blood therapy. I used it in horses much, big time. And I knew what electrolytes and certain things IV could do. And I knew you wouldn't be dehydrating. And I knew if you went through them, dehydration would kill them. I don't mind telling you what I know about medicine, but I had great success and they quiet. Keep them alive. And Dr. Butler, my partner, who's born again now, and fellowshipping with me, had the same attitude. Bloods, you can do wonders with them. Just had to keep the normal electrolytes a level as you could. I don't know. Well, that's all I got to say. But I was one upset guy. I have a brother, brother in law, a veterinarian, and a nephew an neurologist. And I thought, my goodness sakes, what's wrong with you people? So I went out here and got on these bleachers, this baseball or athletic field, and I got to pray. And you know, I can't pray. And I wouldn't have guessed I'd ever be able to pray. Amen. And I said my words to the Lord. I can't believe what they've done. I said, 
and visit a horse and trap up her euthanizer. But that to be my mother and that to be a person. And I don't believe in euthanasia and people. I was in the Navy with a very famous man and he wrote an article after we were out euthanasia was going to be necessary in people but lonely. That's crazy. That medicine is gone. That goofy. But when you don't believe in God you just believe in medicine um, and yourself you can be stupid. You know that must be what I'm overcoming. Something. Anyway I was not happy. About 6 p.m. Let's mention here too that at that time you were not totally solid about your mother believing on Jesus. You had a little bit of question about that. You didn't know if she trusted in the law and her own self-righteousness. You had s some concern about her. You are right. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, you were upset. You were very upset that they took the fluids out. Yeah. But you also had this, this uh, question. I wasn't sure my mother was born again. Amen. So about 6 o'clock, 6 p.m., St. John's Hospital, Springfield, Missouri. My mother, oh, she had lesions in her mouth and on her lips and tongue. She couldn't swallow. I'm I can assure you, I was believed that I reached God's ear. Amen. And I know that's playing through. Amen. Getting God's attention. Not pray some superficial prayer and call it prayer. Anyway, about six, mother started yelling, Jesus, come get me. Jesus, come help me. 30 minutes. soft-spoken woman that you'd never heard her raise her voice is yelling for 30 minutes. Those that call upon the name of the Lord. Well, guess what? Jesus came. Amen. And he came with healing. Amen. The mother came. By the Spirit of God, healed mother's mouth, tongue, face. Yeah, healed her. As a Terry remembered what the Lord said to me. Got to tell him. Now do you think she <laughs> Now do you think she knows me something? I don't remember the exact words. But. But now he said, Now no you think she's saved? There you go. You think she's saved. <laughs> and she lived what, five more years? Five more years. And had it be fun, the Lord told me. I was going to South Bend to a crusade and the Lord said stop us at Springfield get a car drive to Mount Vernon. Did 
this was several years after this hospital, right? Yeah. 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 And she was coming to the end, and I said, I'm going to go pray more. And I got my older sister, she's in heaven, and my youngest sister, she lives in Bridesdale, Missouri. And they went with me. And when we got to Mount Vernon, went to the, to the nursing home. And the younger sister worked, uh, I don't know, I think she was a, a juvenile officer at that time. Anyway, she had to go to work. And Dorothy, the oldest three years old, older than me, was with me, and we turned the corner. Didn't they say she wouldn't know you? Uh, yes. Yeah. They so, told you before you got there, well, she won't know you. Right. <laughs> we turned the corner, going toward her room, the hallway, and she was in a wheelchair. She said, there goes my boy. I kind of enjoyed that. The girls heard that. You know what I did? Cast the devil out of her. My sister said, Dorothy said, Dorothy, something came out. Well, sure, something came out. That's what I was doing. Cast the devil out of my mother. <laughs> and your mother. <laughs> you know what that was that? You know what the Lord said? Don't go back. Don't go back to her. Don't, you'll see her live in heaven. Amen. I never went back but alone. She went to heaven. You had that, you had that experience with your mother. And I want to add another testimony in here because it goes right along with this. You, you were angry at the hospital because even though they weren't going to resuscitate, they were going to withhold food and water from her, yeah. which is torture. And I mean, this to me. Yeah, well, would be with any of us going without food and water. That's now, right. you also had a situation with Patty. Yes. Your wife, who's now yes. in heaven. She's in heaven. And she was having serious medical problems. Right. And you had just visited her, and you went into Ralph's office, which is now Anthony's. And you were looking out the window, and you said, if you want her, you can have her. I said, that bother. You want to finish that? If, bother, if you want her, you can have her. But the devil is not going to kill her. There. Yeah. I walked out that room knowing God heard me. Amen. I knew it. Doesn't matter what anybody thought. God heard me, and I knew it. And five or six times after that, it looked like she would die in the emergency room. I just prayed. And the last time in the emergency room, um, there were five physicians in there, all specialists. And the woman couldn't breathe. She couldn't get her breath. That's Patty. And there was a breathing specialist in there. And I didn't care what they thought. I walked over and got her right arm. And I said, you can have that arm. This is mine. I started praying. Every one of those 
physicians walked out of that office, out of that room. I'm sure they were offended. I'm, but they, every one of them knew who I was. And they knew I wasn't bashful at times. And this breathing specialist finally said to Patty, Miss Davidson, you're going to have to try. Oh, I thought you mean I can talk to her that way. Did you know what? Within a minute, Patty was giving it a try. We overcame, and she walked out breathing. And they met her, can I see you? And I knew all these people. I, I was a veterinarian, they all knew it. They knew my reputation as a veterinarian. Amen. And it was really amazing. They better and I see you. And I thought, what'd you put her in there for? She didn't need it. They, they said, look, doctor, if we'd send her home, it'd look bad. <laughs> I said, I understand it. Just leave her in there. I want to add this to it uh, for those that have not heard this story before. Right. When you were in Ralph's office and you said, Lord, if you want her, you can have her. But um, the devil's not going to kill her. Right. Patty didn't like you very much at this point. No, she, she was upset at me. Right. It was not, you, and I'll be very blunt, it was not that you wanted to keep Patty because she was so sweet and you two got along so well and, and there was such a love between you. You fought for Patty's soul and her life. And you weren't going to give her up to the devil. Even at the times that she hated you. Right. You stayed with her and you fought. And you fought the devil. And you fought with the devil in her. And you got her through that. And when she was sanctified. When she was totally sanctified. And that took years of your praying and fighting. Then God came and got her. Well, but we better tell the whole story. I was watching NBC News. Amen. By 30 News. She came by where I was sitting. Gave me a hug. Said, Doyle, if you hadn't believed in God and prayed, We'd all go to hell. And that showed you right there that God had done the work. He sanctified her, and changed her. And that would have not happened had you put her away. Well, I was told by people they never knew. Any man that would have done what I did, they'd have put her in a nursing home. Amen. I said, don't you know, I know as much as any nurse, and that's not arrogant, but I do. I knew. We better shut up what I knew. No. But I was a hospital corpsman and a, a veterinarian. Four years Navy hospital corpsman. What I think some don't understand is during those years, you know, Patty still resisting you, not wanting to obey God, and she was having physical problem after physical problem after physical problem because of that, but you would not let her go. That's right. 
I was not going to let the devil kill her. Amen. Now that is love. Amen. That is the love of God. Because there were times, I know, I was here one night. Patty stood up. She was not a happy woman. And she turned around. She said, I'm getting a divorce. She told the whole congregation, I'm getting a divorce. And you just laughed. And she stomped out. And you wouldn't let her go. Amen. That's love. That's my heart. The love of God. That's, that's it, the love of God. Amen. But you know what? They wanted to do bypass surgery on her. Amen. Later years, we met with <coughs> Tima, surgeon, and anesthesia, I don't know who all was there. And she had talked to him. And I was determined to not coach, coach her or anything else. That hundred and fifty thousand bucks. Not what I was gonna pay for medical treatment. And Patty said, finally she said, can you guarantee me I'll live longer if you do this surgery? But I said, no. She said, I don't want it. I don't want it. And I thought, my God. Later, a cardiologist said to me the last time he saw her, before she went to heaven and February, he saw her in November, and he looked at me and he said, you've done a good job with this woman. Patty did not die of a heart trouble, and she did not die of breathing issues. She broke her hip. She broke her hip. What? Blood, blood clots. Right. Yeah. And she waved goodbye. She went to heaven. And just before she went, she opened her eyes and waved twice at Kathy Bye and me. Amen. Kathy Bye said, did you see that? I said, yes, I saw that. <laughs> oh, if you think that I'm not grateful where Patty's at and sanctified Amen. by the faith of God, the gospel, and prayer. Amen. Sanctified her. Patty didn't care anything about God. She told me, but she said, I didn't marry a preacher. And I said, well, you didn't marry a veterinarian either. You married the lowest seaman in the U.S. Navy. <laughs> but you know what? God told me to marry her. I was 20 years old. June the 5th, 52. We got married in Presbyterian Church, Linda Vista, California. Amen. Thank God. I don't know what in the world I've been doing all morning. Hardest praying, but I'm good. Better talk. I'm talking easier. Amen. Amen. I, I will tell you, Patty rebelled. Uh, and listen to the devil tell her to go lay hands on her knees and say, be built by the Holy Ghost. Well, good Lord, we all were. And the devil got Patty because of her anger and pride. He took her over.
over. And she turned a wicked spirit loose in my ministry. And I fought for years. After 14 years, I believed it was a false anointing. And I said so in South Bend, uh, Indiana, at a breakfast that we were ministering to people and feeding them breakfast uh, in South Bend. And I talked that morning and I said, I believe this is a false anointing. I believe this is a devil. She, she lost 70% by estimation, but I'm pretty good at estimating things. I've got much experience both in man and as a corpsman and horses. Amen. Thank God. And Amen. Thank God. She lost 70% of the use ever. Her arms and about 30 of her legs. It's amazing. In her just at once. And the day I was when she said lay down on this her niece said be felt the Holy Ghost she yelled to the devil. Now you may not think the devil's got power but the devil's got plenty of power. Amen. Thank God. So that morning, South Bend, when I spoke, I went out. After I spoke, called her. I said, what's going on? She said, about 30 minutes ago, I started getting better. You did? That's what I thought might happen. I overcame that wicked false anointing. Thank God. And when I called it false anointing, I said, this is not the Holy Spirit. This is a devil. And when I said that, I overcame that spirit and some of its uh, effects Patty started losing and it was just uh, I understand why I got such a war inside of me but what long Patty said, would you buy me a new uh, towel? I said, what? She had a Cadillac. Would you buy me a new towel? I said, well, if you want one, well, they're easier to get in than my Cadillac. I said, I'll go buy it now. I bought her one. I said, you know, it wasn't six weeks she was going to her grocery shopping, going, driving herself, beauty shop, going shopping. She regained almost all of that paralysis. And you've shared the last couple years she was with you. She had a sweet spirit. <laughs> I'll tell you, 
and he had a temper. And when she wanted to explode, she would. And I had to pay attention to her. What she said. And that made it worse. Because she couldn't get me to do what she wanted me to do. Amen. Thank God. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank God. Glory be to God. Thank God. Amen. I was back at the fire house and I treat everybody nice as I could unless I decided to push me around and I didn't move. Amen. And they didn't like me for that, but I really don't care. Amen. Thank God. Amen. But, amen. Matty almost recovered everything with my prayers. Amen. But then, two years later, she fell. I think her hip broke when she fell. That's why she fell. Amen. But you knew then she was going home. I thought so. I thought that they wanted to do surgery the next day. They was going to do it that day. And that stopped. They said, we're going to do it tomorrow. I said, fine. I didn't think they'd get it done. They were put a filter and and they never, it never stopped. The Lord said, she's coming to heaven. Amen. She's coming to heaven sanctified. Huh? Coming to heaven sanctified, sanctified. and justified. Amen. And redeemed. Amen. And you better know, I'll see her. Oh, yeah. She'll be with me along with you. A whole bunch of you. Amen. During the millennium. Amen. Thank God. Amen. This is an amazing morning, isn't it? Amen. I'll just add this with it. Because you're an apostle and prophet, and I know there are so many that don't understand that ministry. Jeremiah 1 says, pull down, throw down, plant, build. I don't have all the words, but... You not only did that to Patty, but there have been many here that you have worked with and sanctified and, and more than one before they went to heaven. I watched God, through you, sanctify Jim Clark. Sure did. I watched God, through you, get Terry Mai ready sure to did. meet God. And, and there were things in Terry's life that, that were dealt with those last couple weeks that had not been dealt before then, that God dealt with and got cleared out of the way Amen. so that Terry could go to heaven sanctified. Amen. I mean, I've watched more than one here that you've talked to, ministered to, and they joyously went to be with Jesus. Your, um, your dad worked with your grandfather for nine weeks getting him ready. Amen. And he saw Jesus at the foot of his bed. I'd say that's a reward that I, he was ready. I think Frank Miller, my granddad, yeah. and I both had a reluctance about following the Lord. He was about worse than me, but that worked on me all my life. But Frank was tough. His father was a, a uh, cavalryman, four years, sergeant, 
went as a private, out as a sergeant, four years in the Civil War. And that, that family was tough. Educators. Amen. But that's the... That is the, the job of a, and a prophet and an apostle. I mean, that, that, that we've witnessed here. And, and those that are up here through your ministry have been justified, sanctified to the point that we are, to where the power of God works through us. Such, I, I, I had no idea we were going to get on this. But uh, when persecution hit the church in Jerusalem, or Israel, right. wherever. The apostles were the only ones that could take it. Right. The rest fled the city. The apostles they were brought, scattered. It says uh, the rest of them were scattered. The what? It says the rest of them were scattered. Right. But the wonderful thing about that is it wasn't too many years that Jerusalem was destroyed. And because the Christians had scattered, they weren't in the destruction. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. My God. One other observation I'd like to point out here is that, you know, some people really struggle about a Christian being able to have a demon. Yeah. But these two testimonies right here alone show you, take your mother. When she called out to Jesus, 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 and then the Lord said to you, now do you believe she's saved? Right. The Lord said she's saved, saved. And then what, four or five years down the road, then you cast a devil out of her. Sure and even your older sister, who I don't know if she even knew much about casting out devils, but she saw something came out and your mother was saved according to God. So there a Christian had a devil that got cast out. Mm -hmm. Patty was born again. Filled with the Holy Ghost, yet you cast devils out of her. You've cast devils out of just about everybody here in the room, yeah. probably. <laughs> if not, you'll get one soon. <laughs> just stay here a little while. <laughs> but Dorothy, prayers older me. I don't question she's in heaven. But she was self-righteous and most self-righteous people cannot accept that they can have a devil. I've heard, I've heard this battle in a spirit-filled community. Christians, you can't have a devil. And I've heard them say, you know, I'm blood bought, but cleansed, forgiven, Holy Ghost, filled, and all this, and no demon can touch me. Uh, yeah, I know a man that's been, had that spill a lot, and he died. His kidneys quit working. Wonder what that was. You know what my dad did? When he went to heaven, he was in the hospital. He was 88. And uh, but living by himself. And he fell. But he wasn't hurt much. But they had him in the hospital because he fell. The doctor told him, said, you're going to have to go to a nursing home. And that said, well... Let me go home first and think about it. <laughs> yeah, and Betty, the sister just younger than me, was there, gave him a pedicure. They were talking. That blessed me that Betty's with Dad. It really did. Glenda, must, it would have been blessing if she'd have been there. But Betty needed to be with Dad, I thought. 
Sometimes he gave him that pedicure, and he sat in that chair and said, see you. <laughs> they called me and said, Dad, this went to heaven. I said, you're kidding. I talked to him at 530. I said, he talked to all his children yeah. that day. You don't think he knew what was going on? Sure did. You know what? He said, I am not going to nursing home. I'm going to heaven. <laughs> my mother did similar when she, huh? my mother did similarly when she was, she had been in assisted living, but right. she was happy there. She had friends. She right. had some degree of, you know, dressing herself, feeding herself, playing bingo, <laughs> having visitors. Amen. But when they, when they, actually her body just started shutting down. She didn't have any illness or problem. It just Amen. started shutting down. And when she heard she was going to have to remain in the nursing home, she wanted to go back home to her assisted living home. When she heard she couldn't, that night she went on to the Lord Amen. Or within 24 hours. Amen. What time is it? It is 10.53. Amen. Amen. It's been a different broadcast. Amen. I wouldn't have guessed this one. I didn't think, I didn't know what we were going to do. But now we know. We better do some songs. Amen. Can I say one thing about your post last night? that you posted on Facebook? Why not? You, um, you posted uh, basically the high points of your life, how you graduated from high school, went to vet school, went in the Navy, went to vet school, um, and, and how you started Water of Life Church. Just a few sentences. You, can, you all can read it on Facebook. And you called me later in the evening, and you said, did you see my post? And I said, I sure did. And I was thinking about my life, sort of the bullet points, the high points, just like you did. And immediately came into my heart, uh, strong, confident, and the Lord has led me all my life. And I spoke that to you, and you said, you better know it. You got it. And, and I said, you know, God said to you, I posted this, too, on my page. Um, but God told you many years back when you were concerned about your life advancing in age, according to numbers, but uh, and some of the promises of God had not been fulfilled. And God said, did he say relax? <laughs> Basically, he said, I've got your life right on schedule. And uh, Go ahead. No, go on. And if God has Doyle's life right on schedule, he has to have our lives that are walking with him right on schedule too. And I just wanted to encourage all of you that God has us here with Doyle. He's working on us. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. And God is with us. He's with this place. But if you're here walking with this ministry, you can be confident that God has your life right on schedule, and that he's led you to this point for this day as well. Amen? Thank you. Anthony, you got a Bible? Yes. Would you turn to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14 or 15? I'm going to show you people something. Uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. Referring to angels, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who should be heirs of salvation? What? What does that say? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Are you all here? You know, angels... We're ministering to us all of our lives. Amen. It says shall be heirs. What? Yeah, it, that verse says for them who shall be heirs. They're, that sounds like they're not walking in that salvation yet. 
They're not. Right. <laughs> that's that, that's, that's the point. <laughs> that's exactly what an angel had to deal with me more than once. You know when that bull got me down? Stomping me at his head, had me knocked on the ground, hit me with his head, goring me. Next thing I knew, I was standing on his back. He's spinning, and I'm walking on him. And I wait till he gets spin to the right position where I could jump off his back to a partition. And I leaped, landed on it. And Bo was mad. Who do you think did that? That an angel. What? Did you know Hanley does not that say that? Yes. It's referring to angels. We, we, we're talking about, um, all the way through that chapter, we're talking about Jesus and then the angels. And he's talk, referring to angels here. In verse 13, I'll start back there. It says, But with, to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool? Referring to the angels, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Yeah. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, I'm going to tell you all something. I don't think I've ever told this story. But I could outrun anybody on my football team. And I could outrun just about anybody that decided they were going to catch me. Did you know I was a running halfback? I never scored a touchdown. Never. Amazing. I gained a lot of yards and somebody else took it in. And I remember one night in Carl Junction, Missouri. I broke out in the open five times. And a guy caught me every time. And I fell on about the third yard line, three yard line, or two, and fell on the button ball, which is not smart, knocked the wind out of me. I was there, couldn't get my breath. I heard the ref say, uh, if he doesn't get up, you got to call timeout. Well, they had to call timeout. I got up. They took me out. While I was out, the guy took it in. God never wanted me to score up one point. Can you believe that, Coach? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I said, wow. <laughs> That's what I said. Wow. I got close to that line more than once. Uh, I had fun playing football because of my speed. You know, I want to I want to interject something here right. because God's the one that told you I have your life right on schedule. But I tell you what, you don't wake up in the morning saying, oh, God's got my life right on schedule. I'm cool. I'm fine. You go, you wake up. Today is the day of salvation. You Amen. wake up in the game. You wake up fighting the good fight of faith. You are not sitting back waiting for God to do something. Amen. Well, look at the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, the revelation that he had and he even he said, I've not yet apprehended. Right. But this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, I press toward the mark for the call, the high call of God in Christ Jesus. He said he hadn't apprehended. Even after this verse that says, sent to, you know, that angels are sent to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Look at the next verse. Therefore, 
We ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest any time we let them slip. That is right, the next verse. You've, and it's, yeah. I just knew where we that. We have to keep pressing. We are not waiting for God. We are pressing in with our faith into the kingdom. Amen. I love what you used to say back in the 90s because I was struggling. And you would say, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation because I needed some money. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. And if it didn't come today, I'd wake up the next morning. Today is the day of salvation. It's coming today. Amen. It's coming today. Thank God. And I love Philippians 2. I love that verse how, because it says that you can work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For, the next verse says, for it is God who is working in you to will and to do his good pleasure. That's why you you work it out because God is working in you. Right. Amen. Amen. You realize God wouldn't let us sing. Amen. He wanted this on this recording. Amen. Listen, folks. You may think your child, some of you overprotective people, you may think your child can't get 50 feet away from you because they might sin. I've been around those people. Well, let me tell you, they may not sin when they're in your sight, but they'll get out. <laughs> and what you don't know, perhaps, there's an angel knows exactly where they're at. I remember one day I had a, a three-year-old that somehow had wandered from our home. And we looked all over for him. We couldn't find him. And I wasn't a hovering mother. But I pretty much knew where they were. Well, we couldn't find this one. And I finally was... I went out of the front door of our house and I was getting ready to figure out which direction I needed to go in to find out where he went. And the next thing I see, he is running up the street toward the house. And I knew his angel was kicking his little butt to get back home. I mean, he was running toward the home. I had trust that God knew where they were. And like my grandmother said, God knows where he's at. And God will get him home. You know, I know this is God. I have a schoolmate. Amen. I went three years elementary, four years high school. And God is going to bring this woman into the kingdom. You can't stop him. And God has me praying for her. I don't know what she believes or doesn't believe. But I know this. God is going to convert her. And God said to me, she used to be a friend of mine. We never had any romantic things at all. We just, I thought well, I was a good friend of hers. And she talked to me. We, we talked friendly. And I called her a couple of times a year or so back. Man, she was hot. And I thought, well, Lord, I, I really don't care. And God made it plain. She will become your friend again. And you mentioned it last night to me, the night before. There aren't many of your class left that are still alive. But while we're talking, uh, I was born and raised right on the west side of Sargoxy, Missouri, and born on a piece of property that James Madison Davidson and family owned. And uh, a Berkey owned it when I was born there. But he bought it sometime after James Madison died. And I, I knew him. I knew all the Berkeys. But Ed Berkey bought that property. And that's where I was born. And raised right down the road most of my life. A, a young life. 
not only that, but that name Berkey is on the list of the founders of that holiness church. Well, you said it. You're right. That's something I'd like to talk to my friend, what she knows. Amen. Because the, the people that built, not, not built, people that established Redwood Church, Lou Davidson, my granddad. Right. First were listed. Second, Claude and Leva Dodson. And Leva is granddad's oldest daughter, her oldest child. The third person mentioned Berkey. And it doesn't say who. If, if the holiness people had the revelation, had the understanding about righteousness, then that proverb says, the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. God is required to get that seed delivered. The seed of the people from the holiness group. Well, I'll tell you, those people know something about God Amen. that most people don't. And you know, they didn't, they didn't get started till what, 1892? Amen. And that, that guy, uh, Young, Benjamin Young, Amen. that Methodist, that really started the whole thing, he was an oddhead. And what, 21 or so at a Methodist church in a, or whatever it was, and this Methodist was preaching, and he stood up and said, uh, I was rocked in a Methodist cradle. That's, yeah, that's, well, that's right. what he said. Yeah, right. <laughs> and that's all he wanted to hear. And what that preacher say to him? I am what preaching Methodist? I am preaching Methodist doctrine if you would sit down and listen. Right. That's who started that bunch. You know, and talk about full circle. That's how we began the program. Talking about the holiness people and their their understanding about praying through. Right, right. And Benjamin Young was a cattle rancher. Amen. He started the whole show. Amen. Amen. Uh, Lou Davidson was a contracting road builder. Amen. Highway builder. And his father, when he was... Uh, Granddad was, well, I can't tell you exactly now, but uh, his father died of tetanus. And six, seven days and gone. Listen, that bunch of Davidsons, they all had a fear of God, like few families I've ever met. And I didn't know why they were that way. But they watched James Madison, a wealthy farmer, rancher, fruit grower, landowner. They watched him die, and they turned to the Lord. Amen. And there was a murky involved in that. Amen. What time is it? It is 11 after 11. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Anybody else got anything to say? I appreciate God bringing up the angels. Uh, and if, if you're a, an heir of salvation, you got an angel watching you. Amen. What says so? Let's talk about fiery. It's been a long time since I read it. Hey, Amen. Are we ready here, Chico? Amen. Hey, Let's do it. Greater is he that is in me, greater is he 
that is in me Greater is he that is in me Than he that is in the world Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Than he that is in the world Satan's like a roaring lion Roaming to and fro Seeking whom he may devour The Bible tells me so Many souls have been his prey Caught in some weak hour But God has given us today His overcoming power Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Than he that is in the world On that day of Pentecost A mighty rushing wind Blew into the upper room To baptize all of them with a power greater than anyone had known And I'm so glad we got it too I wanna tell the whole wide world Now tell them with me Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Than he that is in the world God is greater than the wisest man Greater than the power of sin Greater than the gates of hell Greater than anyone can tell Greater than the richest king Greater than anything Greater, oh greater Greater, yes greater testimony of Elliot Hodge that in 26, 1926 they thought he was not going to make it. He went to heaven three times. Amen. I knew Elliot Hodge. Heard him speak at church two or three times. I wasn't well acquainted but most everybody knew in the church no illusion. Lyle's son, Luke's grandson. There were others there. They were some boys, girls. Wasn't that big a church. Except during the Depression and the war. They Held it and stood outside. The present somebody preached the word of God. Pray. Amen. Amen. Mercy. Grace. Mercy. Grace. Mercy. Grace. Be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson. Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. 
This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.